Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. We are back with the myth and the legend, the great man, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. Good to see you. I have no idea what I'm going to say when I hit record. It just comes out. <laughs> it just <laughs> so, comes out. Sometimes it flows and sometimes it's herky-jerky. Sorry about that. Well, what I have for you today in topic number three is a quote from Janet Yellen. Uh, she was out on the Sunday business talk shows. And the quote that I took from Janet Yellen is, higher rates will actually be good for the economy. Uh, so a lot of people look at that and they just don't, they don't understand, they don't agree. So I thought we'd just start there. Janet Yellen sitting across from you. She says uh, higher rates are good for the economy. What do you think? The first thing I think is you're going to owe me a dollar because <laughs> didn't we have a dollar bet yeah, that we we're going to raise rates before the end of the year? We did, yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll send so, it too. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I got to send you one if they don't. So That's right. Uh, but I have a feeling that my odds are looking better and better every day because they're they're they're, they're starting to understand, you know, um, the uh, exuberance in the markets and the danger that's being created by all this liquidity. So, yeah, uh, yeah I think um, I think, I, you know, I don't know because she didn't elaborate on the comment. She just made the comment. So yeah, she didn't say, here's why. Yeah, she did. You know I, mean? <laughs> I looked. So, I'm like, where's where's the meat? No, just and she does that so, on purpose. She just drops those lines. Well, to see how we react. Yeah, yeah, you know, so she doesn't have to worry about, you know, her position, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of pleasing politicians, things like that. Nope. That's that's the beauty of treasury secretary is that, you know, she doesn't she doesn't really have to worry about all that. So what she's doing is she's sending up a flag, up the flagpole. And you see what yep. the markets are doing today. They're down a little bit on that statement. Mm -hmm. Just like when she said we're going to have to, you know, put the foot on the brakes a little bit and pull off the gas of the liquidity pool. Yeah. The last time kind of, you know, reducing, you know, uh, the money supply. So she's just sending a warning shot over the bow just to see how the markets receive it. Everybody already knows, you know, the markets are never wrong, right? The markets mm. are always right. So everything's baked into the markets and they already know you got to, you got to stop uh, flooding the economy with uh, liquidity. You've got to raise interest rates. Inflation is a problem. The, the markets already know that. So this was a warning shot over the bow just to see what the reaction is going to look like and to kind of lob a little softball to the Fed. Yeah. Yeah. And again, this is the second time she's done that, right? I think it was three. It might have been four weeks ago. I don't know. Maybe been six weeks ago. Every day runs together now where mm -hmm. she said basically, hey, inflation's worse, worse than we think or something like that. Basically poking Jerome Powell and then she had to come out 24 hours later and say, oh, not my place to talk, blah, blah, blah. Just nonsense. Yeah, this is the Same second thing now. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> She'll come out and say, oh, well, the market misunderstood, oh, whatever. But yeah, this is the second time. I think we do have to pay attention. I think I think there's a Fed meeting on the 15th and 16th of this month. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see those notes when they come out two or three weeks later, because uh, I think there's just more and more signs uh, that inflation is picking up across the board. Wage inflation is picking up for sure. And while we may have commodity prices that you know go up and down, wage inflation is usually very sticky, right? It's it's one of those things that once it happens, it's stuck. It's not like lumber or cement that you know could go up or down. Uh, but yeah, uh, inflation's real. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how employers respond and react. <clears throat> you know, now that people are coming back into the pool, I got allergies hitting me today. Yeah, <clears throat> I just. Uh, got a little something in my throat there, but, um, you know, employers having to compete and having to offer higher wages to compete with the unemployment benefits, right? So, you know, people didn't want to go to work because not everybody, but a lot of people that were getting more money, you know, by not working makes sense. Why would you want to go take a job for less than you can make, you know, with the unemployment benefits? So I don't blame anybody for doing that. Um, so employers had to up the wages to compete with that. So once those programs are done, um, and there's more people entering the workforce again, it'll be interesting to see if wages start to contract a little bit and what the response is, you know. Out yeah, there. I, I've been studying this for a long time. Wages are very inelastic. They're, I think the wages going up, I think they stick. It's not, it's not like an input cost like commodities or copper or things of that nature. But yeah, I guess, I guess we'll see. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other thing I think, you know, Again, I go back to her quote, higher rates are good for the economy. When I think about that, and I had to think about this for a while, I think that is just the first sign to your earlier point about soaking up excess liquidity. We have way too much liquidity in the system, way too much. Yeah. And now there's just a general rule that, you know what, we've got to, we've got to soak some of this up. It's, it's, 
it's gone from being, you know, a, a problem to really being almost a crisis. Cause there are, yeah. there are yield chasing. People are chasing starving for yield. And when you do that, you generally can make very foolish decisions. And there's three ways to, you know, pull the liquidity back out of the market. A lot of people say, how do they suck it back out? Number one, you tax it out. So yeah. you, you know, you tax the liquidity out of the market to uh, inflation. Inflation is a tax, you know, which pulls liquidity out of the market. Number three, interest rates. Mm -hmm. So when you add all those three things together, guess what you get? Yeah. Um, you, you know, you get a lot of deflation and <clears throat> deflation means markets correct. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause we, so yeah, so I think it's clear to your point, they're going to be using all three of those elements to soak up liquidity. It'll be interesting if they do that too much that, yeah, we could get a deflationary spiral, which would really freak the Fed out, right? The, inf in, the Fed, in my opinion, is afraid of inflation, but they are terrified of deflation, right? Mm -hmm. they, they have beaten inflation before. They have never beaten deflation. So- Interesting. Yeah. And then how do you do that where we're at now? I mean, now you're talking zero to negative interest rates. <laughs> negative, talking, baby. Yeah. 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 So it's, it, you know, it's really interesting. And, uh, you know, a lot of people debate, you know, what is the, what is the effect of all this on the dollar? And, you know, at the end of the day, what's really interesting is when you go look at the boom and bust cycles of the markets, um, whatever it is, gold, stocks, bonds, you know, anything, when you look at the massive corrections and sell-offs in the markets, everything goes back to the dollar. So mm. when everything is down, the dollar is up. Mm. So it's really interesting how people say that, you know, the dollar's trash and, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're devaluing this, that, and the other, you know, at the end of the day, when, when the poop hits the fan, everybody goes into the dollar. <laughs> Rush for the dollar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just interesting to watch. So, so what do you think? Do you think higher rates other than winning a dollar for me <laughs> will be good for the economy? Do you think, you think, I mean, the, the thing that she didn't even say, she yeah. didn't even say slightly yeah, I think, higher I think, you know, and to, to that last video of, you know, more wealth created, more wealth lost. Yeah, I think there's two more damage being done by low interest rate environment. I agree. Um, because it's just putting pressure on too many things. It's creating, infl it's, it's creating bubbles everywhere. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I think a low rate um, liquid environment is creating damage that cannot be undone. So uh, yeah, I think higher rates, more stable rates, less liquidity pumped into the market, I think is, is the path that we need to be on. I think it's ultimately going to be better. It means that there's going to be a lot of money lost. It means that we're going to have a lot of corrections. But I think that's more of a stable environment moving forward. And, uh, you know, and again, my thoughts are, if you want to play modern monetary theory, you know, Janet, if you're listening, you know, <laughs> Jay Powell, if you're listening, you know, don't throw it to the investment banks, print the money and pay for infrastructure, pay for your programs that you want to create, you know, in terms of the investments in, you know, America, in the infrastructure of America, don't tax people, you know, print the money and pay for the programs you want to pay for. Don't print it and give it to Wall Street. Yeah, totally agree. Well, yeah. Yeah, Wall Street has really benefited from this as they uh, seemingly do in every crisis. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. And just to put it in context, when I talk about higher rates, we'll just use the 10 year as an example. I think the 10 year this morning mm -hmm. is at 1.6 or thereabouts. When I'm talking higher rates being good for the economy, I'm talking, you know, maybe up to two, six, right? But it's not mm -hmm. five, six, right? I'm not talking exponential growth because if it goes, you know, from 1.6 on the 10 year to 5.6 for some reason, that will be horrible for the economy. It will come crashing down and just all commerce could stop. It would, it could be bad, right? So that's what I mean by when I say higher rates, I mean, marginally higher rates. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Because then, then you know, money goes back into bonds, goes back into treasuries, which is good for the country because then, you know, we have uh, other countries wanting to invest in our, our assets and our debt and things like that. Um, and it pulls um, all of that, you know, exuberance out of the markets because they're being forced in there. You know, don't fight the Fed. What that means is the low interest rate environment is pushing capital into risk assets because that's the only place to get yield so as soon as rates go up it takes that off the table it's it's a move away from risk assets back into more um you know safer longer term assets so yeah ultimately i think that's good at the end of the day i think where we're at right now is very bad i agree i think we're we've been we've been where we're at too long um you know to use the party analogy it's already struck midnight we've already had the celebration it's it's 1 a.m 1 30 it's it's time to take the punch bowl away. It's it's just time. So, Greg, with that, uh, I wanted to thank you for your time. These have been three great interviews. We got uh, what Grant Cardone, Max Maxwell, and Janet Yellen. That's a pretty good day. 
Yeah, that's a good day. <laughs> Thanks, buddy.